What was the name of the ship it was launched from? It is a mothership of some kind. Some amphibious craft probably holds these boats. No one's answering these questions. They need to be answered, but they will never be answered by the cafe singer in the White House who applauded himself last night over and over and over again, creating a parallel universe for himself the way every other dictator in history has done, talking about a paradise that doesn't exist. He went on and on and on about how wonderful the world is and how everyone who opposes him is the enemy. There are no enemies except the internal enemy to the cafe uh, dancer. I couldn't watch it. But you watched it. Some of us did, some of us didn't. I'm not going to play all the clips. And then he puts down the, the fight against ISIL and says they're nothing. He won't even say they're Islamic. Every time they kill somebody or blow something up, they say they're doing it in the name of Allah. They say they're doing it in the name of Islam. And he says, one of the world's religions? No, not involved at all. How's that for the big lie? We were warned that the day would come, that the big lie would be repeated over and over and over again. And as Hitler's propaganda minister Goebbels said, if you tell a big lie often enough, it will become the truth. So from the smallest police chief to the biggest liar in the world, the same big lie is being told. That it's nothing to do with the religion. It's just killers and fanatics. It's nothing to do with the religion, and we have nothing to fear from them. Well, my friends, it gets worse by the day, doesn't it? If you care to join the conversation, you want to talk about the boats and Iran? How do you feel about American sailors on their hands and knees? Go and look at the pictures that were released, not by ABC, but the pictures released by Iran State TV from the moment the U.S. sailors were captured and bent down on their hands and knees because they wouldn't even fire a shot to save themselves. Why didn't they fight? Why did they not fight it out? Why didn't they shoot their way out of that situation? They had the guns to fight their way out of that. Why didn't they? Tell me why. The whole thing was a setup. That's why. Something's wrong with this picture. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. For more than a year, America has led a coalition of more than 60 countries to cut off ISIL's financing, Disrupt their plots, you stop lie. the flow of terrorist fighters, and stamp out their vicious ideology. With nearly 10,000 airstrikes, Failure. we're Thief. taking out their leadership, their oil, their training camps, their weapons. <coughs> we're training, arming, and supporting forces who are steadily reclaiming territory. All right, this is right out of Stalin's Russia. This is an alternate universe of a madman. You see, here's the problem with America. I, I figured it out last night. <coughs> We are so controlled by the entertainment industry that most of us don't know the difference between reality and fantasy. So when you have a president who puts out a fantastic story of lies, as he did last night, in the midst of our patrol boats being captured, sailors apologizing, thanking the terrorist nation of Iran for returning them safely, all this happens and he doesn't mention it, nor do any of the fetid fallen creatures on the floor of the US Congress say a word about it all of these rotten fruits on the jungle floor I, I watched last night with a I was appalled I said they're running the universe these low lives are running the universe I looked at them one after the other none of them looked like a substantial person to me they looked like marionettes of an inferior design but let's put that aside I'm not writing a novel of, uh, for Jonathan Swift he's long dead but when Americans are fed Katzenberg, Hatzenberg, Matzenberg, Ratzenberg, and Geffen's imagery, songs, on a daily basis forever, you know how powerful Spielberg is in storytelling? They're geniuses. Do you understand that they're geniuses? They're like Merlin the Magician in how they can screw up the, the minds of the world into not knowing reality from fantasy. So after many years of watching movies, smoking pot, taking LSD, getting drunk at night in the uh, meatpacking district, throwing up on their silk stockings in the morning, they don't know the difference between reality and fantasy. So he can get away with anything he wants. He knows the difference between reality and fantasy. Make, make no mistake about that. He knows the difference, but he's a sociopath, so it doesn't matter to him whether or not he's lying. 
In fact, the more his lies are accepted, the bigger his ego becomes. It's like a balloon. The helium to him is a lie. To a sociopath, the lie is the helium. You haven't read that anywhere because I just created it for the show. I create a bit of a novel every day on this program. It's a novel based upon reality, but I use flowery language to try and get my points across. So I'll say it again. To a sociopath, the lie is their helium. And Obama is the sociopath who lies. And every time he lies and he gets the applause and he opens his big smile, there's the helium. The helium worked. Pumps him up. Doesn't even mention the capture of our boats. No humiliation for him because it's not real to him. He doesn't think it's real to you. So again, as someone who's worked with boats and engines for well over 20 years, including some advanced technology, I've never seen this happen concurrently. I can't imagine two boats would go out at the same time. So again, I don't know. Did the boats go aground because they were off course or did the engines quit? Remember first we were told the engines quit, then we were told uh, that it was a GPS failure. Remember that? What actually happened? And if it was a GPS failure, why did the GPS fail? Why did the uh, <coughs> SEAL Team 6 go down in flames over Afghanistan several years ago, killing all of those heroes in uh, SEAL Force Team 6, the very SEAL team that captured Osama bin Laden? Remember the cover-up of that one? It was, the, it was the topic of my novel number two, called A Time for War. It hurt me so deeply, I wrote a whole novel around it. Well, nothing seems to change, though, because we have stooges like Jake Tapper and Wolf Blitzer, government agents, in my estimation, they're no different than the government propagandists who work for Pravda or Izvestia under the Soviet system. They're identical. There's no independence, no real questions. Occasionally there's a fake question. Charlie Rose is part of Izvestia. Make no mistake about it. They're all part of Izvestia. So what do we do about it? I'll tell you what we do about it. You want to hear what the greatest power you have is? It's me analyzing for you, giving you food for thought, you thinking about it, you deciding whether I'm wrong or I'm right. Well, you deciding whether there's even a possibility that what I'm saying is the correct approach or whether what Obama is selling you is the right truth. That's the only thing we've got. Because I have no other reason to be on the radio. None whatsoever. Oh, a lot of things are said about talk show hosts. Some is true, some is false. But at the end of the day, we in the talk radio business have only one purpose, one reason to exist. And that is to analyze the news for you and give you our views. And hopefully, if it's a little different than what you have read or thought about, then we have a valid reason for you to listen to us. If it's the same stuff every day, you're not going to listen very long. If you hear it, if you hear it every way you turn, you're not going to listen to any one of us in particular. But if you get someone who has, has an anal analytical mind, who gives you a viewpoint that's unique, you say, you know what, I, I, I really don't agree with this guy, but he may be right. Maybe the guy's right. Maybe there is a double agent inside the government who set them off course or who gave the Iranians the codes to the engines. Or maybe there's something wrong. Maybe the thing is too convenient to make the Iranians look good just before Obama's about to release $57 billion in uh, held assets. He wants to show them they're, they're our friends. It seems the whole thing's staged, like a kabuki play. So what do you think, folks? You believe in Spielberg's fantasies or my analysis? WJR, Anna, you're the first up. Go ahead. What's your opinion? My husband's in the Expeditionary Combat Command out of Long Island, and they're going. To, they're in pre-deployment activities right now, and they're being deployed in March to relieve these very sailors that were just detained and released. And I spoke with him last night, and absolutely not would they both vote simultaneously have a mechanical problem if one of them did the other boat has the capacity to tow the other boat and if their gps both somehow magically stop working on both boats they have other sat phones with gps capabilities in the hands of our service personnel on those boats not to correct so so they were sent onto a ground on purpose by some some act by somebody Somebody sent them off course on purpose, in other words, right? 
Well, but not only that, but my sister, she flew HE-53s and was was deployed to Bahrain. There's Farsi and there's Bahrain. There aren't a whole heck of a lot of other islands in the Persian Gulf. And when you're deployed in that area, you know exactly where you're allowed to go and where you're not allowed to go. So even if their GPS was off course, their training, they've been there for not quite a year, but over six months. They know where Iran is. All right, so right, they know where the the Farsi island is. Yet they both went aground at the same time. How did that happen, in your opinion? You have what nine or ten sailors aboard. None of them knew they were heading into a sandbar. It doesn't happen. These are well trained service people. And now my husband, oh. he's being deployed to go. Fill their hold it, hold. It. I don't want you to tell us anything more about your husband. It's not important that you do, and I don't want to put you or him in danger. We have very dangerous individuals in this government. And I don't want to see any harm come to your husband. So that's unnecessary to tell us. What do you think happened, though? What's the woman's intuition on this, Anna? Uh, obviously, there's a traitor in the White House and one that's willing to make a mockery and put our service people who are patriots in danger. Now, the way the men gave up in the apology speech, as far as I know, Maybe I've watched too many movies, but I've read enough to know this was very unusual to be grilled like this by this uh, fascist from Iran. And um, isn't it only name, rank, and serial number required when you're captured? Um, if that. So why did he say I... we were treated well? Why did he say we went off course? Why did he say the Iranian Navy d rescued us? Why did he say all of that? Why did he apologize? To feed this propaganda wheel and knowing some of the service personnel that are in this position, they would have been threatened with essentially death or other major military repercussions to be forced to have that admission. Wait, they were threatened by the Iranians or they were threatened by their own command structure after they were released? What, what do you mean? They, they would have been threatened or they were threatened? No, I'm, I'm saying that in order for them to make a mockery of themselves and to go along... All right, so they were, they, were, they, were, they were intimidated into this confession by the Iranian fascists, is that it? Well, um, or the Iranian fascists in our White House, I'm not sure what you're referring to. Well, uh, let's not go there right now, but th this is a very strange situation. New video shows U.S. sailors seized from boats being treated as war prisoners, yet John Kerry gives a congratulatory speech. The smiling cafe singer doesn't even mention it last night, even though it happened before it. Nobody in Congress even mentions it, except Duncan Hunter, who served in the military, who says that Iran is going to copy the U.S. boat design and benefit from the equipment on the craft. Do you recall several years ago that we, quote, accidentally delivered our most advanced drone to Iran without a scratch on it? Do you remember that one? And then they reverse engineer our technology, and then it's theirs. Anna, all I can say is maybe, just maybe, we will survive this subversive regime. You know, even if you look at them as academic leftists, that enough, that's enough to tell me they're subversives. They are out to destroy the military, and they just did another job along the way. I don't know how anybody in the military can't see it the way I do. Thank you very much, and I wish you great luck, Anna. This is an amazing day. I don't know if you understand how severe this is. Reparation roadblock. Supreme Court justices seem divided over Iran payment to terror victims. Did you hear this? Iran is able to get back the money that was held up because they were, you know, a terror nation, except when they got their man in Havana in the White House, now suddenly they're getting all the money back. And now Iran payments to the victims of Iran terror was held up by the U.S. Supreme Court? That's crazy. I just had a victory at the U.S. Supreme Court, by the way, which you should know about. It was covered on my show yesterday. Yes, I, small as I am in the world stage on the world stage, had to tell you this yesterday because I don't know of any other talk show host who actually had any such uh, situation. But there was a U.S. Supreme Court ruling that was in my benefit yesterday. It took me five years 
an awful lot of time and money, and it was all unnecessary. 